In this lesson, we are going to sketch the graphs of rational functions. In our last video lecture, we talked about getting the domain, intercepts, vertical asymptote, horizontal or oblique asymptotes of rational functions. In order to sketch the graphs of rational functions, we have to do all of this. And then, the only thing that we didn't do in our last lecture was creating our table of signs. This table of signs is similar to what we had when we were discussing rational inequalities. This table of signs will help us determine whether the graph is above or below the x-axis. Let us start with our first example. We want to sketch the graph of f of x equals x minus 1 all over x squared minus 4. Recall that we always have to factor both our numerator and denominator when we are dealing with rational functions. So we write this as x minus 1 over x minus 2, x plus 2. First, let us get the domain. For our domain, we just have to make sure that our denominator is not equal to 0. Hence, x should not be equal to 2 and negative 2. For our intercepts, for our x-intercept, we set the numerator to 0, which means that x is equal to 1. This will give us the point 1, 0. For our y-intercept, set x to 0. So we will get y is equal to 1 fourth. This corresponds to our point 0, x is 0, and y is 1 fourth. Next, we look for our asymptotes. For our vertical asymptote, we set the denominator to 0. So that will give us x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. For our horizontal asymptote, the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, which means that our horizontal asymptote is y is equal to 0. We have no oblique asymptotes. Next, we will create our table of signs. So just like when we were discussing rational inequalities, we create number lines for each of the factors in our numerator and denominator. This is for x minus 1, x minus 2 x plus 2 and then we locate our critical points the values of x for which the factors will be equal to 0 this will be equal to 0 when x is 1 this one will be equal to 0 when x is 2 this is equal to 0 when x is negative 2 so therefore we will divide our number line at this critical point so we now have four parts for x minus 1, everything to the right is positive, everything to the left is negative. For x minus 2, everything to the right is positive and then negative. For this one, everything to the right again is positive, everything to the left is negative. Remember that for all of these values, the sign will always be positive when you are on the right of your critical point because the coefficient of x is positive. And then let us count the number of negatives. For this interval, you have 1, 2, 3. Therefore, it's negative. You have two negatives here, so it's positive. One negative is negative. And lastly, this is positive. We are now ready to sketch the graph of our rational function. Let us start with our points for our intercepts. We have 1, 0, and 0, 1 fourth. 1, 0 is here. And this is 1. So 1 fourth is somewhere here. Next, let us draw our vertical asymptotes x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. This is our x equals negative 2, and this is our x equals 2. 
Next, our horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. Now that we have everything that we need, we now go to our table of signs. What is this interval? This is to the left of negative 2. This is for the interval negative infinity to negative 2. It says here that the graph will be below the y-axis. And take note that this is that interval, negative infinity to negative 2, but you also have a horizontal asymptote here and a vertical asymptote here. The only possibilities for us to have it be for the graph to look like this or this one. However, from our table of signs, it says that y coordinates should be negative, which tells us that this has to be the graph. We should eliminate this because here the y coordinates are positive. Next, this is for the interval negative 2 up to 1. That's 1 over there. For negative 2 up to 1, we have to go through these two points. And it says there that it has to be positive. The y coordinates have to be positive. Take note that on the left, I have a vertical asymptote. And I have to pass through these points, which means that my graph will look like this one. Remember, if you have a vertical asymptote, it's either you have this one or this one. You cannot have this because it would mean that the y-coordinates are negative. Next, let us consider this interval. This is for the interval 1 to 2. For the interval 1 to 2, you're already at this point. It says that the y-coordinates should be negative, which means that you have to be below the x-axis. Moreover, you have a vertical asymptote here. If you have a vertical asymptote and you're coming from the left of that, it's either you look like this or like that. What will it be? Of course, it has to be this one because your y-coordinates must be negative. You have to be below the x-axis. Let me just smoothen this a bit. We have to pass through this point, and there you go. And lastly, for our last interval, this is the interval 2 to infinity. It says that you have to be positive. The y-coordinates have to be positive. And you have a horizontal asymptote here and a vertical asymptote here, which means that how will the graph look like? It should be like this. That is now the graph of our function. Here is the graph when we use the computer. So this verifies that what we had is correct. For our next example, let us sketch the graph of 2x minus 6 all over x plus 2. This is already in simplest form. You can no longer factor. There are no common factors between the numerator and the denominator. Let us start with our domain. For our domain, make sure that the denominator is not equal to 0. So that means x is not equal to negative 2. For our intercepts, x-intercept set the numerator to 0, which means that 2x minus 6 equals 0. This will give us that x is equal to 3. So we have the point 3, 0. For our y-intercept, we set x to 0. This gives us that y is equal to negative 6 over 2 or negative 3. Hence, we have the point 0, negative 3. x is 0, y is negative 3. Next, for our asymptotes, we get our vertical asymptotes from the denominator. Set it to 0. We now have x equals negative 2. For our horizontal asymptote, 
the degrees of the numerator and the denominator are equal. And therefore, our horizontal asymptote is y equals the leading coefficient of the numerator over the leading coefficient of the denominator. So that's y equals 2. Again, we have no oblique asymptotes. Next, we are ready to create our table of signs. We draw two number lines, one for each factor. This is for 2x minus 6. And this is for x plus 2. The critical point here is 3. 2x minus 6 is 0 when x is 3. x plus 2 is 0 when x is negative 2. We now divide our number lines along these points. The coefficients of x for both of these are positive, so therefore everything to the right of the critical point will be positive. For this interval, we have two negatives, so that's positive. This is negative and this is positive. Let us now sketch our graph. We start with our intercepts. Our intercepts are 3, 0, and 0, negative 3. This is 3, 0, and 0, negative 3. Next, we draw our asymptotes. We have our vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2 and horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. This is my x equals negative 2 and this is my y equals 2. We will now look at our table of signs. For this interval, this is to the left of negative 2, so that's negative infinity 2 negative 2, the y coordinates should be positive, which means that we are above the x axis. Where is negative 2? This one, you have horizontal and vertical asymptote, which means that we should look like this one. Again, you have two possibilities, this or this, but this cannot happen because in the first place, you do not have any x intercepts here and moreover you cannot have negative y coordinates here next for this interval this is the interval negative 2 to 3 it says that you have to be negative whereas negative 2 this is negative 2 up to 3 you already have the points here you have to pass through these points and you are negative and you have a vertical asymptote here so this will look like this one. Lastly, for this interval, this is to the right of 3. So that's 3 infinity. And you are always positive. But you have to pass through this point. Hence, you will look like this one. And this is the graph when we use the computer. So that ends our lesson for graphing rational functions. So again, the important thing about graphing rational functions is to make sure that you have your domain, intercepts, asymptotes, and table of signs correct. To make sure that you have the correct graph.